So let's go ahead and begin deriving the FFT algorithm. And our starting point, again, is going to be our DFT equation right here. It's just been written in a slightly different way. Almost always when the FFT is presented, it uses this W notation. So this quantity right here, W sub n naught. W sub n naught, all it is is e to the minus j 2 pi over n naught. 2 pi over n naught is actually the fundamental frequency omega naught. So really all we're doing here is letting w sub n naught equal the complex exponential e to the minus j omega naught. And this is just a very conventional piece of notation to use when discussing the FFT. So all I've done is use this conventional notation to rewrite the DFT equation in this manner using this w notation. So this is just a, a notational thing right here. What we're going to do is given this n naught point data sequence, the discrete time signal f of k that we're going to work with here, first of all what we're going to do is we're going to assume that it is an even number, even length signal, so n naught is even. What we're going to do is we're going to take this original sequence f and we're going to break it down into two pieces. So we're going to break it down into a signal that we call g and to a signal that we call h. g is going to be formed by taking all of the even samples. So it's going to consist of f0, f2, f4, all the way up to f sub n naught minus 2. So just start with f, grab all the even samples, and that is what we call g. Similarly, start with f, take all the odd samples, f1, f3, f5, all the way up to f sub n naught minus 1, and let's call that this new discrete time signal h. Okay, so right now we've broken f of k into two sequences, One's called G, one's called H, and each one of these, by assuming that the original signal has an even length, these each have length n naught over 2. With these definitions, I can now actually rewrite my initial equation for f sub r, because this right here is a sum over all samples of f, but I have been able to write f in a new way. I have it written as G and h. The even samples are the g signal and the odd samples are the h signal. So I can actually rewrite this equation as follows right here. I can actually break it down into two pieces. I can write it as all of the even samples. So this is counting from k equals 0 up to n naught over 2 minus 1. So this is a sum over n naught over 2 terms. And each one of them is indexing 2 times k, or an even sample. So when k is 0, this is f0. When k is 1, this is f2. When k is equal to 2, this is f4. So all my even samples of f are right here. Similarly, this piece right here is also a sum over n not over 2 things, but it's dealing with all the odd samples of f. So at this point, I haven't changed anything at all, and I even haven't introduced the g or h notation yet. All I've done is rewritten the FFT expression on the previous chart in terms of the odd parts and the, or I'm sorry, the even parts and the odd parts of f of k. From this line to this line, the only simplification I'm doing here is with the exponent. w sub n naught raised to the 2kr is the same thing as w sub n naught squared raised to the kr. And similarly here, w sub n naught raised to the 2k plus 1r is the same thing as w n naught squared to the k r, and I've factored out this constant term. w sub n naught to the r gets factored out of this sum right here. Factoring that out is kind of nice, because now in this sum I have a w sub n naught squared, and in this sum I have a w sub n naught squared. If you go back to the definition for w sub n naught, what you'll see is that when you square w sub n naught, what you end up with is equivalent to w sub n naught over 2. So from here to here, we've used that fact that w sub n naught squared is the same thing as w sub n naught over 2. And same thing here, w sub n naught squared is equivalent to w sub n naught over 2. So I've been able to kind of rewrite my original DFT expression f sub r as this sum of two pieces. There's kind of all the even pieces and all the odd pieces, and we haven't changed anything yet. We've just written out this 
finite length sum into these two pieces. Now we're ready to introduce our definition of g of k and h of k, because that's essentially what I have sitting here and have sitting right here. f sub 2k is really g of k, and f sub 2k plus 1 is really h of k. So that's exactly what I have right here. And remember, g of k is a length n naught over 2 sequence, and, length, and h of k is a length n naught over 2 sequence. So really what I have right here is a sum of n naught over 2 things, a length n naught over 2 sequence, multiplied by w that has been established for n naught over 2. So this term right here, by definition, is the DFT of the sequence g of k. So this right here is actually equal to g of r. Similarly, this right here is a sum over n naught over 2 things for a length n naught over 2 sequence, and it is using w sim n naught over 2. So this, by definition, is h of r. There's still this constant factor out front, so we had to leave that here, but we've been able to write the DFT coefficient f of r as g of r plus a number times h of r. So this is just an n naught over 2 DFT, this is just an n not over 2 DFT. So at this point, by introducing these definitions of kind of the even and odd sequences, we're able to write this thing that we would like to compute as really the sum of those two pieces, g of r plus a number times h of r. One thing to keep in mind that will be important here on the next chart that we continue the algorithm development and derivation on is that when we have an n not point DFT, the coefficient f sub r is always n naught periodic. Here, g of r is the n naught over 2 dft, so it is n naught over 2 periodic. Similarly, h of r is an n naught over 2 dft, so h of r is n naught over 2 periodic. So we will use that fact when we continue the algorithm derivation on the next video.